Welcome back to our series on Applied Regression Analysis. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is Lecture Video 13. This is Straight Line Regression Part 1, so we're in Chapter 5, Part 1 of the book. So the overview of the chapter is given here. Uh, so this time, in this video, we're going to talk about the basic questions we need to ask uh, for uh, performing regression, some mathematical properties of a straight line, that'll be very brief, and then our statistical assumptions. That's where we're going to spend uh, almost all of our time today, or in this video. All right, so starting in section 5-2. So in this chapter, again, we are studying straight line regression model. It's also called simple linear regression. Okay, so if you hear simple linear regression, uh, that means a straight line. It means one variable. So we're going to let y be our response variable. And as I mentioned in an earlier, earlier video, I think video one or two, we have a bunch of different names for y. We can call it response variable, dependent, output, or regress and variable. The x is our explanatory, also aka is also known as um, independent, input, predictor, regressor. So two, four, five ways of saying x, four ways of saying y. So just in case uh, it wasn't confusing enough, let's add a whole bunch of different ways of saying the same thing. Okay, now we're going to take a random sample uh, of n pairs of observations. So pairs of observations. These values are and I missed a comma. These values are paired with each other. Each other. Let's say this is a person. So we might uh, measure their age and their blood pressure. And we want, say, age would be X, and we want to know if that predicts um, Y, their blood pressure. Okay? So it would be two measurements on the same person. Okay? So the, the um, input and output are both measured on the same person. So we have these um, paired observations. And they can be considered points in 2D space which is exactly what we've done here. These are the measurements of age and systolic blood pressure. Notice that age is down here. It's the predictor. This is X. And Y is going to be the systolic blood pressure of these people. So a bunch of 30 people. So you can see that there's a upward pattern. Also notice the outlier here. Okay. And uh, these pictures, it's hard to see, are taken from our textbook. So got to give credit where credit's due here. And... Uh, for those of you who are not in the class who are watching it, Supplied Regression Analysis and Other Multivariate Methods by Kleinbaum and several others. Um, okay, so here are the two basic questions that we're going to uh, ask and answer when we do regression. First is, what's the best fitting or most appropriate mathematical model to use? In other words, this could be a straight line, it could be a parabola, a log function, etc. Okay? Square root, you name it. Okay, so that's, that's one of the questions we need to ask. And then we also need to say, well, how do we determine what is a best-fitting model So um, for the data, data? Our example here is if the model is a straight line, how do we find the best-fitting straight line? Okay, And so I'm not answering that right now. That's what we're going to answer uh, in this chapter and actually in this course. Okay? Not even in this chapter, really. That'll be chapter 14 that we talk about answering question two. All right. The reading assignment. It's section 523. It's called The General Strategy, and it's about a page and a half in your book. Starts near the bottom of uh, page 42 and goes all the way through the bottom of 43. And the reason I'm not going over this is because uh, in this video is that uh, I want you to read it and we're going to cover the whole thing in chapter 16. So now let's briefly talk about the mathematical properties of a straight line. First off, a straight line mathematically is a deterministic line, right? So we're going to use y as the vertical axis, x as the horizontal axis. Um, but in this course, instead of using uh, um, b and m for slope and uh, for intercept and slope, we're going to use betas. So beta zero or beta naught is going to be our intercept and beta one is our slope. Okay, 
and this describes the straight line. We've got two different straight lines here. We've got y equals 5 minus 2x, and we've got y equals negative 4 plus 1x. So we've got a negative slope because the negative is in front of our slope. We've got a positive slope because we've got a positive in front of our slope on this line. And of course, I hope you all know that if you have a value of x, you fill these in, and then you calculate the values of y that go with it, and then plot it. Okay. Uh, this is the, uh, the substance of what we're going to uh, talk about in this video. And um, first, we have these five assumptions. The first one is existence, and this applies to any regression model, not just the straight line. Okay, So for any fixed value of, uh, y, of x, y is a random variable with a probability distribution having a finite mean, mu, of y given x. We're fixing x, so this is conditional probability. In regression, we talk about conditional probabilities. And then variance, uh, y given x, again for the y, given one x. So y given x denotes a conditional probability, and y depends on that one value of x. And again, x is fixed, i.e. known. Okay, So for the value x1, we have this distribution here, and we have a mean of that distribution. And here, for x2, we have another distribution, and we have a mean of that distribution right here. And here's the third x3, x4, and so on. Okay. Now, when we uh, connect these points, these means, we get the regression uh, equation. And as you'll see, this is not a straight line, is it? There's a zigzag here. So uh, we've violated one of the assumptions we'll talk about in a minute, which is uh, linearity. Okay, so now independence. So this says that the y values are statistically independent. If you don't know, this means independent. Okay, the y values have to be statistically um, independent of each other. But this assumption can be violated when we're taking different observations uh, on the same person over time. That's called a longitudinal or a repeated measures. And they're a special case. Or longitudinal. So we want to make sure that um, um, we have to take uh, special considerations, and we have to account for the dependency if it's taken um, over time. If we violate this assumption, then it's very often that we get invalid conclusions. We don't want that, okay? So, now, when the Y values are not independent, they're, they're definitely correlated. And again, there's special methods that we use to uh, find the best fitting model and make valid statistical inferences. And that method, that special method, depends on whether how much of a dependence there is, the type of dependence, uh, the characteristics of the response variable, and the complexity of the situation as well. So uh, those are all considerations. If we get to them, we'll talk about them uh, much later in the course. Okay, so linearity. This is only for the um, straight line regression. And it says that the mean value of y, which is mu of y given x, uh, is a straight line function of x. In other words, if we connect the dots on the different means, we get a straight line. So again, in this previous um, figure, figure 5.4 from the book, uh, you'll see that that is violated. It's not a straight line. It's a zigzag there. Okay, so, and here in figure 5, we see that it's a valid um, assumption of linearity or a straight line, um, yeah, linearity, okay. And we can express this using this equation. Note that the expected value of y given x is the mean of y given x, and that is beta naught plus beta 1 x, or, and, and notice that, we're, we have a mean here, and we're using expectation, so that's where the statistical portion goes into. This is not a 
deterministic model. This is a statistical model here because we're talking about the mean or the expected value. But we can equivalently write this as a statistical model with E, the error, uh, explicitly in there. And that is Y equals beta naught plus beta 1X plus epsilon. And the book uses capital E, but capital E is often used for expectation, so I don't like to, so I'll use this little epsilon there. And epsilon is a random variable. It has a mean of zero uh, at a fixed point x. In other words, x is not random, x is fixed. So this means that y is a random variable, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. I can solve for e in the above equation, and I messed up, that should be an epsilon. And when I do that in this equation here, I get y minus then this. And look at what this is equal to. If I look at the first equation, that's equal to my mean. So I've substituted that in. So that's the way we look at what at the error is the difference between a value of y and the mean uh, for each particular value of x. So here we can uh, figure 5, 6 is right here. And we're saying that the error is the difference between y and mu of y given x for the specific value of x. All right. And notice that this uh, here, I'll, this uh, picture here, this is, gives us the error probability distribution at each value of x that's observed. Okay. And again, we have e of y equals beta naught plus beta 1 x. All right, let's move on to assumption number four, homoscedasticity. The variance of y is the same for each and every value of x. So there is a variance of y for an individual value of x. And again, figure five shows a violation of this. You'll notice that the variance here and the variance here are going to be very different. In fact, uh, the fourth value here is way different. Okay, so that would violate this, that picture shows a violation of this um, assumption. One of the ways we can write this very quickly is to say that sigma squared of y given x is identical to or equivalent to sigma squared, where it doesn't have anything. So sigma squared not having any subscripts means that it's constant across all values of x. And this is a shorthand for saying this, Actually, I need to put this in there too. That sigma squared of y given xi is equal to sigma squared of y given xj, where i and j are not the same. And we're going to verify this in chapter 14. Now for our last assumption, and that is that the data is normally distributed for each value of x. So for any fixed value of x, we're fixing x, then y has a normal distribution. Again, both figures 4 and 5 that we looked at showed violations of this. Here's figure 5, and here's figure 4. And you'll see that none of them look normally distributed. They all look skewed or bimodal. Okay. So this assumption, we have to have this assumption in order to calculate our confidence intervals and to perform inference on those parameters, which are the betas, and, and specifically intercept and slope in this chapter. If this assumption is violated, we can often transform the y values using a square root or a square or an inverse, which is 1 over, a log, uh, usually the natural log, or an exponential function. We can try each of those and see if our normality is then met. So again, um, what I want to point out here in the uh, summary is that we can... Um, uh, the assumption of normality and homoscedasticity apply only to y given a specific value of x, not for all y across all x, not across the x values, but within an x value for, for only one x value at a time. And so um, we're looking at normality for each of those. And then the homoscedasticity, 
<laughs> homoscedasticity uh, applies, um, there's a variance um, for each value of y, or x, I'm sorry, for each value of x, and those variances have to be the same for all values of x. And we can write this uh, assumptions 2, 4, and 5 very succinctly by saying epsilon, the error, is distributed as a normal with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. And again, we can look at how to um, write error as a difference between y and its mean for each value of x. All right, so those are the, the assumptions. We will be proving those or checking those later on in the course for every analysis. It, otherwise, you may be saying things that aren't true. Okay, don't forget, scan your lecture notes by midnight, uh, before, uh, before midnight of the date that's listed on the course calendar. These are for you, so please be neat so you can read them. Update your formula sheet if there was, uh, yeah, there's some equations and models that we went over today, so you might want to add those. If you have questions, come to my virtual office hours. Uh, if those absolutely don't work for you, then by all means, email me, and we will see you next time.